They say that criticism is a gift. I never really subscribed to that idea. Joe Biden isn't a big fan of criticism, especially when it's directed at him. Now, despite the fact that, A, he's been in public life for roughly 100 years, okay, it's 40-ish, but you get my point, and B, he's only been running for the 2020 Democratic presidential nomination for a few months, Biden has already shown some of the thinnest skin I've ever seen in politics. Let's go through the evidence. The first incident came in late March when Lucy Flores, a former Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor in Nevada, said that Biden had kissed her on the head before a campaign rally in 2014, an incident that left her feeling, quote, uneasy, gross, and confused, end quote. And it's completely inappropriate that it does not belong in any kind of a professional setting, much less in politics. And that is something that we should consider when we are talking about the background of a person who is considering running for president. The initial response from Joe Biden's presidential campaign in waiting, quote, Neither then, nor in the years since, did Biden or the staff with him at the time have an inkling that Ms. Flores had been at any time uncomfortable, nor did they recall what she describes, said Biden aide Bill Russo. <laughs> it's a big time swing and a miss. And if you think Biden didn't see and approve that statement before it went out, I have a hot video rental chain up and coming. It's called Blockbuster that I might be able to interest you in. Just call me. Now, things didn't get much better for Biden when he himself decided to sound off on Flores' accusations, saying, quote, In my many years in the campaign trail and in public life, I have offered countless handshakes, hugs, expressions of affection, support, and comfort, Biden said in a statement. And not once, never, did I believe I acted inappropriately. If it is suggested I did so, I will listen respectfully. But it was never my intention, end quote. So, not uh, so strong out of the gate there, but Biden did eventually go on to say this. But I will be more mindful and respectful of people's personal space. And that's a good thing. The idea that I can't adjust to the fact that personal space is important, more important than it's ever been, is, is, is just not thinkable. Now fast forward to mid-June, when Biden recounted his work with segregationist Senator James Eastland this way, quote, I was in a caucus with James O. Eastland. He never called me boy. He always called me son." <clears throat> End quote. Sidebar. Biden's point in talking about his work with Eastland was that politics is about finding ways to work with people with whom you have major and fundamental disagreements. He just said it really, really poorly. I could not have disagreed with Jim Eastland more. And the he was a segregationist. I ran for the United States Senate because I disagreed with the views of the segregationists. There are many of them in the Senate at the time. Biden's sort of praise for Eastland drew criticism from a number of his opponents for the Democratic nomination. And New Jersey Senator Cory Booker was particularly outspoken. That speaks to a power dynamic that, 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 that his speak, his speech did not reflect an understanding of. That segregationist senator saw him as son because he saw himself in, 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 in that young Joe Biden. And, and the reason why he would call my father boy is because he didn't see himself and he was attempting to degrade and dehumanize him. Now Biden, he didn't like that. He didn't like it at all. Apologize for what? Corey for it. Corey should apologize. He knows better. There's not a racist bone in my body. I've been involved in civil rights my whole career, period. Not good. Telling an African-American senator he's the one who needs to apologize for raising questions about what sounded like praise for a segregationist is just not the best way to diffuse this sort of situation. So take a step back. <sighs> Cleansing breath. And you see a common thread between these two incidents. And the common thread is this. Joe Biden doesn't think people can question his motives because, well, he's Joe Biden. In the case of the Flores accusation, Biden insisted that, quote, not once, never, did I believe I acted inappropriately, end quote. In the Eastland imbroglio, Biden's defense was that, quote, there's not a racist bone in my body, end quote. And what that all boils down to is this. I'm Joe Biden. How dare you question me? You're the one who should apologize. Which isn't a great look for any politician, but especially one who is the front runner for the Democratic presidential nomination to face off against Donald Trump. Look, I get it. 
No one wants their motives questioned. No one likes to admit that they didn't say things the exact right way or that they offended someone without even meaning to offend someone. And Biden, unlike most of us, has been surrounded for his entire life with a lot of people, staffers mostly, telling him that he's a paragon of moral virtue, which then creates a vicious cycle where, when he is criticized, he takes it deeply personally and hunkers down, rather than simply apologizing and moving on. Now, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret about politicians. It'll just be between us. Almost all of them are thin-skinned. They get pissed off when people attack them. They want to lash out. They are, in a word, human. But most of them, the successful ones at least, understand that taking the high road is the politically smart thing to do. If you show people that you get mad when you get attacked, guess what they will start doing a lot more? Attack you, yes, you knew that. All of this is particularly relevant for Biden because the 2020 campaign is only going to get rougher for him in the coming months. With debate season beginning and Biden still the unquestioned frontrunner, there's gonna be a lot more nastiness that's coming his way. He needs to learn how to effectively deal with criticism or run the risk that his thin skiddedness will keep him from his goal, becoming the Democratic Party's nominee. And that is the point. We make new point videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Watch them, watch all of them.